Hey there, folks. This is Riley Holland, and I'm here today with Robert Grossman, the wellness business systematologist. How are you doing today, Robert? Great, Riley. How are you? I'm great. It's good to have you here, especially because I'm excited to talk to you about this new training program that you're about to publish, How to Unlock Exponential Growth in Your Wellness Business. This is the first I've heard of it, and I can't wait to see what this program is going to entail. A, because I'm interested in whatever you do, especially as a coaching client of yours, but also because just as I even look at this title, it reminds me of some of the leaps and bounds that I've made with your support in my own wellness business over the past few months. And this idea of exponential growth is something that I really kind of came to organically and almost automatically simply by working with you from scratch on my business and realizing that even what seemed like gigantic tasks at the beginning, the more that I learned about how to grow my business, the better I got at learning how to grow my business. So it actually became easier to make big leaps as I went forward, and that's sort of what I take to be in my own experience, this idea of exponential growth. The growth follows that curve that keeps going up, and it keeps getting easier, and the growth keeps getting bigger. So I guess my first question for you is, uh, what is your notion of exponential growth in general, and why is it so important for wellness business owners? Well, first of all, like what you said is exactly precisely right because exponential growth happens when you have multiple sources of growth. Or I guess the correct way to say it would be multiple factors contributing to growth which build on each other in a synergistic way. So as you begin to work with several different growth drivers, each one contributes to the others, making it easier and easier, and you get this process that gains momentum and seems to take a life of its own. And this is so exciting because it's completely different from incremental growth. I mean, a lot of business owners that I talk with have mixed feelings about growth in their business that are ambivalent about it because they associate the idea of growth with more work. But, you know, the truth is it can be like that. It can be more work to grow. And for sure it involves doing a few things differently. But the truth is, if you're a business owner, you're already pouring so much energy into what you do. You pour in your time, you put in your energy, your intellectual capital, all your passion and your work. And if you're doing that to just get one-tenth or one-one-hundredth of the return, which you're actually capable of getting from that activity, or even worse, when you're serving clients, you're delivering to them just one-tenth or one-one-hundredth of the value which you could potentially be delivering, then there's something very sad about that. So this idea of exponential growth is really fascinating to me because it's like an overlooked gem that is inside of almost every business. Yeah, well, I'm really excited that you're addressing this head on because, as I said, this was such a big thing for me to wrap my head around and experience because, like you said, it seems like so much work at first, but in a way, that's an illusion. The work comes from the initial getting the ball rolling, and that's kind of the image that I think of. There's a giant boulder, and you put your shoulder up against it, and at first you got to really, really push to even get it moving at all, but then it starts rolling on its own. And the more it rolls, the faster it rolls, and then you just have to walk alongside it and make sure that it's on track. Right. There's a phrase which is very popular among entrepreneurs, work on your business, not in your business. So if your idea of work is actually directly serving each customer, going through all the motions that are required to deliver that service every time from scratch, then the more customers you have, the more you have to work. This is why I talk about systems all the time, because when you work on your business instead of in it, then what you're doing is you're actually creating systems that allow those services to be delivered to the customer more and more easily. And if you do that with any measure of creativity and innovation, and if you learn to look within your industry and outside your industry and at what other people do and what other businesses do to get sources of new ideas, which you can then bring into your business and test 
and check the result and basically embark on this journey of defining what you do, creating systems around it and beginning to systematically improve the systems. Then actually it's like you're streamlining your entire business model more and more, making it easier and easier to uh, deliver that service or to create your product, whatever it is that you do. That seems like such an important overall attitude shift for business owners because I bet very few people come right out of high school or college owning their own business. We start out usually as employees, which is a very different mindset of how we work, whether we're paid by the hour or salary or whatever, we think in terms of our time, like you were saying, dealing with specific customers or specific tasks, and then the paycheck comes in. But shifting to this attitude then of having your own business, the entire game changes. And like you're saying, you have to work on that business because first of all, you're not guaranteed that specific paycheck. But secondly, because now you're building the mechanisms. That's right. You're building the mechanisms. And of course, it's good to work in the business as well to a certain extent. There's got to be a balance there like everything else. But if that's all you do and you're the business owner and all you do is work in the business, then there's nobody working on it. There's nobody thinking about the delivery systems. There's nobody thinking about strategy. Nobody actually thinking about things like marketing, your business model, how you're deploying capital in your business, what sort are the relationships that you have being used properly within the business, all these different factors. You've got to focus on these. And when you do, it is a completely different attitude. And the impact is transformative. I mean, the impact of this can very quickly multiply the impact, the value, and the income of most small, medium businesses by two times, by three times, five times, or even ten times. Because, you know, like we said, it creates an upward spiral of change in the business where progressive change gets easier because you are defining processes and you are building a stable foundation on which you can build. So you mentioned a variety of areas within the business that can be grown in this way. And then also you mentioned before how they sort of symbiotically can help that exponential growth by contributing to one another. Can you take one of these areas of how you can apply this principle of exponential growth to a wellness business and kind of get into the down and dirty details of it? Yeah, sure. I can do that. But before I do, maybe it'd be worthwhile just to give one example of why it's so important to have multiple different areas to work on if the goal is to create exponential growth. Because that may not be obvious to everybody. I think it's a little bit mathematical, actually. Because the idea is there's two types of growth. There's arithmetic growth where you simply add things together or geometric or exponential growth where you multiply things together. So the, the whole key is in business, if you set it up the right way, it actually works in a way where the impact of efforts in one area multiply with the impact of efforts in another area. For example, I always tell people to break down the business in a simple way. Imagine that there are only three ways to grow your business, three and only three. You have the number of clients, you have the average size of a sale, and the frequency of purchase. And this is a very simple model, which is basically a formula that can give you the complete revenue of the business. A certain number of clients make a certain volume of purchase with a certain frequency. So if you want to, say, double your business, one way to do it is double the number of clients. Well, that's intensely difficult. Maybe it's an almost impossible challenge for most businesses. Or you could double the size of the sale. Or you could convince them to purchase from you twice as often. But these are actually mammoth tasks. The trick is to recognize that these three factors, they can be approached individually and the effect multiplies. If you grow all three of these areas together, all you need to do is increase your number of clients by 25%, increase your average sales size by 25% and increase frequency of purchase by 25%. And now we're talking about something that's realistic because these are incremental changes now. 25% is, is believable. When you multiply 
those three 25% improvements together, the result is 100% improvement. It's a doubling of the business. And this is the power of exponential growth, especially when you take that double business and you do it over again. So this seems to be an example of how important it is to have this sort of holistic bird's eye view of your business, whereas you can imagine in some of these mega corporations or something, somebody's only working on one tiny thing. But if you're your own wellness business owner and you're seeing all of these different aspects of your business as symbiotic, as sort of organs in a single body contributing to each other in that very explicitly mathematical way, then that's what's going to make this happen. I, I see that now. That makes total sense. Exactly right. And that's what allows you to set goals that are realistic and take baby steps towards growth instead of having this mammoth challenge that is really intimidating and not realistic in the first place. With this approach, you take baby steps, one step builds on the next, and it becomes a much more gentle process, but it's delivering much more powerful results at the same time. Great. So let's take a look then at one of these example areas and how this might happen in one of these specific bits of the business. All right. A any particular area that you want to start with, or shall I pick one? Uh, why don't you go ahead? Well, why don't we start with marketing? Because there's no area of any business that has more leverage than what marketing can give you. Marketing is all about leverage. So before we go on there, would you mind explaining maybe kind of on a second grade level, even just for me, this idea of leverage? Because I hear that applied in a lot of different ways in business and marketing. And it was one of those things where I, I was thrown around so much, I always assumed that I understood it, but I was never quite sure that I didn't. It seems so important. So what's leverage in, for example, marketing? How does that function? Well, you know, if you think about an actual lever, that's the best image to understand leverage. A lever is just a, a big plank where you can push down on one end of it and lift something really heavy on the other side with a relatively gentle force. And that's what leverage is. It's a force multiplier. So the reason I say marketing has tremendous leverage is because that's an area where you can make very small changes and have a tremendous impact on the business. That's what leverage is. The ability to make a small, easy change with a dramatic impact. Gotcha. It makes total sense. And you know, the thing that's interesting about marketing in small business in general and wellness businesses in particular is most wellness businesses actually don't even really use marketing. I mean, they have only the bare basics. They have things like a storefront and a sign outside. They have an ad in the yellow pages and a website. And they always tell me that they get lots of customers through word of mouth, which is all excellent, but it's just barely scratching the surface of what you can do with marketing. And the reason why is simply because you cannot measure, track, analyze, or optimize any of those things. I mean, you can with some kinds of websites, but only if it's specifically designed to deliver a marketing goal. The websites most wellness businesses have, there's actually no way to measure what's happening there. And if you can't measure it, you can't improve it, the mathematics of exponential growth will not work unless you have something to actually measure and improve. That's how you make it solid. Makes sense. And it seems like also this idea of word of mouth advertising is an example of how that area of the business is linked to this other area, which is simply your clientele, the people that you already have, and bound by the limitations, actually, because you can only have as many word of mouth advertisers, so to speak, as you have mouths coming in and out of your business. So that seems like an example of how it can get tied down to another aspect rather than the other aspect lifting it up. That's exactly right. And let's take that word of mouth for an example, because if we just isolate that and look only at that one little aspect of marketing, there is so much that almost any small business owner could do to improve their performance just in the area of word of mouth because most businesses simply rely on goodwill and on delivering a fantastic service or product to get word of mouth. And if they're really sharp, maybe they ask for referrals. But just through the simple step of implementing a formal referral system, and what I mean by that is a, a system where they not only ask their clients for referrals, but they make a special offer to the client. 
and they make an offer where not only the client will benefit, but the person the client refers also benefits. They make it easy and they deliver this to the client in a way that they're not asking for more business, they're actually offering as a service to their valued client that they will give a great deal to their friends or colleagues. I mean, when you start to play with the different variations of formal referral systems that you can create in a business, you can begin to create enormously creative types of referral systems and you can run more than one referral system. I have businesses with five or six different formal referral systems all working together. And when you do that, you start to dramatically increase just the power of word of mouth. You have one satisfied client. Now is that person going to maybe mention to two or three colleagues at work? Or do you give that person a reason and a vehicle to share that experience with 20 or 30 friends? That seems like a great example of a baby step like you're talking about, where if you take sort of this image of the average wellness business that only does word of mouth, where they can say, well, here's one little thing I can do now that's not going to take that much work and that's going to take advantage of what I already have in place and optimize it. So from there, so let's say we have that hypothetical wellness business and they're doing word of mouth and then they start implementing some of these referral strategies that you mentioned, how might we see that business keep going up the curve of exponential growth through the marketing channel? Well, if we're isolating the conversation at this point to the marketing channel alone, there's two different things they can do. Now, one thing they can do, once they've got the formal referral system working, they need to start measuring that and implementing improvements on that. Because even within that system, there's a chance for improvement. But like I said before, the more you limit yourself to one system or one aspect of the business, the more you're actually driving linear growth, not exponential. So if you really want to drive exponential growth within marketing, what you want to do after you've got your formal referral system running and the results are coming in and that's really working for your business, start working on the next aspect of marketing. And there's so many different marketing ideas that most wellness businesses and most small medium businesses in general just never ever explore. So what's an example of one of those? Well, one of the best examples of one of those is client reactivation. So many business owners are so focused on always bringing in the new clients, but it's really hard to bring in new clients. It's really expensive to bring in new clients. That's actually one of the worst things you can do if you want more clients. One of the best things you can do is bring in old clients. I mean, what about all those clients who visited you, purchased from you a year ago, six months ago? Where are they? We know that reaching out to those clients with a reactivation offer, just telling them, we, hey, we care about you, we missed you, we have a great offer for you, that's one of the lowest cost and most effective ways to bring in a burst of new clientele into the business. So just imagine you put those together with a client reactivation campaign, which is also very easy to do. Every business has the list of those old clients in-house. So once we already have the list, it's very simple to reach out to them. And you can attract a burst of new clients into the business. You've also got the formalized referral system working. So you're getting a much larger value creation with each client because the referral system is also working with each and every one of those. So that's an example how these two initiatives within the marketing area are each reinforcing the other and that's the key to the mathematics of exponential growth. Ah, so you're having more people coming in through referral but since you're also doing this client reactivation thing which is not just a one-time thing right? But you're building a system based on it where you're going to continue to reactivate clients. Since you're doing that, every single new client is more valuable because of this reactivation system. Is that right? Because of the referral system. Every client is more valuable. The referral system increases the value of every client who comes in your door. Uh, and then they're more likely to also return later down the line. That's exactly right. I really think that more wellness business owners should consider doing is education. 
We don't usually think of education as marketing, but especially in the area of wellness. I mean, most of the practitioners that I speak with are so passionate about what they do, and they're so full of knowledge and information about how to be well, how to heal, how to balance the mind, body, and spirit. They have so much to say and to share. And they're looking for people in their communities who resonate with their approach and their message, the way they speak and articulate their ideas. So just by you know, taking the step to get out there and educate people about your ideas and your approach, it's another one of these synergistic ideas where by educating your community on what you do, you bring in new clients, you also increase the value of every client relationship because a well-educated client is a more valuable client. That's The more you educate your client on why your services are beneficial and how to apply your service or your product in their life so that they can get the most healing power out of it or whatever benefits it provides so they get the most out of it. The more educated your client is on that, the happier client that's going to be. So that's a client who's more likely to visit you more, more likely to purchase more. That will be a more frequent client. That will be a client more likely to refer to other clients. So it all works together. You know, that's so interesting you mentioned that in particular because this seems like another example of using something that you already have but maybe aren't taking full advantage of. And by that, I just mean your own specialized knowledge. And it's easy to forget when you become an expert on something like wellness or your particular area of wellness that you are an expert because you've gotten used to the information, but that you have all of this great stuff that people want to know about. And when I think about massages that I've gotten, I mean, the best massages I've gotten have usually ended with a pretty long conversation with the therapist where I still remember things that they've told me that made a big impact. And I walk out sort of feeling like I got away with something by having downloaded all of this extra information from them. And for them, it's just sort of like chit chat after the session. So utilizing that and making the most out of that, I definitely see how that could be valuable. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, we've only scratched the surface of what you can do in the marketing area alone. And I'm not even sure we need to cover more and more examples because I don't think that's what this conversation is really about. But the concept, the idea that I want people to get from this is that exponential growth is unlocked when you look at your business with a bird's eye perspective. You look at how all the pieces fit together and you choose multiple areas to make small baby steps forward in a systematic, measured way, driving small improvements in multiple areas that reinforce each other and create this kind of quiet growth power inside the business. And you may not see the results instantly, but very soon these synergistic actions start to really click and work together and bring in results from the marketplace. And you just begin to see a dramatic wave of growth in the business. So I see how these different areas within marketing, these different sort of aspects of what you could do with those baby steps in marketing work together and help synergize each other. And then you get that sort of growth curve, that exponential growth curve within marketing. But then marketing itself on a larger scale within the business is just one of those little pieces that's then interacting with other ones. So we have exponential growth happening in marketing. Now, how does that relate, let's say, to one other area of the business as a whole that they then come together and make even more synergistic exponential growth? All right. Well, the wonderful thing about marketing, and the, the reason I said it delivers so much leverage is because marketing is synergistic with every aspect of the business that has anything to do with your customers or your clients. So let's just talk about the business model as another area. The business model is another major key area where tremendous growth potential can be unlocked. And I'm going to give you an example of that, but maybe I should just define the term first because a lot of people ask me always, what is business model? Is that the same as a strategy? No, business model is, is not really the same as strategy. 
oh, is it the same as tactics? No, business model is not tactics either. It is the entire integrated approach. Business model is the way that you operationalize strategy and tactics to create a working system that delivers something to your clients and creates value. That's what business model is. It's the operationalized process that delivers something to the client and accepts payment in return. Does, does that make sense as a working definition? So you might say that it's the pathway through which your value travels in one direction and the money travels back towards you. Is that correct? All of the different twists and turns? Yes, exactly. And it's very concrete. It's easy to think about business model and easy to work with it because business model is concrete. It's the actual stuff that you do. An example of a business model that I think everybody is familiar with, well, because it was a complete and total disaster, but in the good old days of the internet dot com boom, like around the turn of the millennium, there was a fabulously popular dot-com business model. And basically the way it went is, first you had to be fast. Everybody was racing to market so they could get that precious first mover advantage. Then, I think we talked in a previous interview about the ridiculous Super Bowl ads. That was the next element of the dot-com business model was advertise like crazy so you can get up to critical mass. They wanted to buy eyeballs. Remember that phrase? Mm-hmm. And then later, figure out how to monetize the eyeballs, right? That's the business model. Not really very solid. The world caught on, and we had a historic crash off of that cliff. But a few companies, which created a working business model, like look at the Google, Amazon.coms of the world, a few companies actually created a powerful, unique value creating business model out of that and they emerged as you know the new giants the reason i mention business model is because particularly in wellness businesses i am always surprised to find the business model is usually completely unexamined it's almost taken for granted it's like the way that the industry does things is the only way it can be done and, and no other options are even imagined or considered but that's, of course, is a huge mistake because there's incredible value that's left on the table when it's approached that way, when it's neglected. That seems like an important point because I think the average person who gets into business as a secondary thing, by which I mean, let's say wellness is what they're really about, but then they also have to do the business side, uh, will maybe not apply their creativity and their innovative side to it and just say, how can I quickly get the operation up and running, look at what other people are doing, follow along with that so I can get down to the wellness itself. But it seems like this is a great opportunity for the creative side to come out and make big changes. Yes, and it's another area where a little bit of systems approach can unlock a lot of exponential growth. I mean, let me give you an example of that. Because the most common business model that you see, not only in wellness, but everywhere, is what I call the one-shot business model. Pretty much the way it works is you advertise or you do something to get clients, and then you sell something to those clients, some sort of product or service, and that's it. You don't do anything else, whether they buy it or whether they don't buy it from you. For some businesses, that works well enough to keep them alive and let them pay the bills, but it's a terrible business model because it doesn't do anything to create value. And usually it's completely unexamined because in my experience, a lot of business owners just, it doesn't even occur to them that that's something that they should be focusing on and should be changing. They don't realize that the business model itself can and should be a source of innovation. When we think about innovation, we think about new technology a lot of times, new stuff. But in my definition, innovation is much simpler and it has absolutely nothing to do with technology. Innovation is about your client. I mean, if the business is about loving the client and giving to the client and serving the client, innovation is doing anything you can to serve your client better. Anything you can to give more love to the client, to respect the client and revere the client more and give more value to the client in their life. And the business model itself 
Well, it's the actual method that you use to serve your clients. So it makes a tremendous difference. I mean, if you take that one-shot business model that I just described to you, all you need to do is add one little thing to it and you completely transform the entire model. And that one thing is a little bit of follow-up. So let's just look at that. You're doing some sort of advertising and you've got a stream of people coming, responding to that advertisement. They're interested in what you have to offer. You show them what you have to offer. Some of them say yes, thank you, and buy it. Some say no, thank you, and they don't buy it. All you have to add is if they do buy it, figure out how to offer them something else a little bit later, how to help them go further down the path. What's the next step after they've already taken advantage of the first offer, which presumably is creating tremendous value in their life, but presumably it's not the complete end of the road. You can always go farther, higher, better, help them along the path. And then there's the others who don't buy. Normally, most of the people don't buy, by the way, so this is actually the more important group. Well, they do have a need. They responded to your advertisement. And I see this all the time, that clients are coming, they're responding to a business, they're calling, but they're saying no to the offer. Well, those people have some want or need but they don't like your offer. So figure out how to offer them something else that addresses the same want or need from a different angle. And that can be another of your own products or services, but it could also be a product or service from another company or another person that meets the same want or need in a completely different way because it's even delivered by somebody else. Even just the way you've described that as the people coming to you from the advertisement, the people who say yes and the people who say no, it's easy to think of the no's as, okay, I don't want to bother them anymore. But the fact is that they did respond to you. They qualified themselves somehow. And just seeing that that puts them in a different category than just somebody who you've never made contact with in the first place seems like a big opportunity for clarity and using that knowledge. Exactly right. They raised their hand and they asked you for help. You know, what it really comes down to is a, a shift in mindset from thinking of a transaction with the client to thinking about a relationship with the client. If you're thinking about the transaction with the client, well, they said, no, okay, that's their choice. I'm not going to pressure them and force them and cajole them like a used car salesman. They have their choice. But if you think about a relationship, somebody came to you with a want or a need. And as a person who seeks to serve that client, you can build a relationship with them by showing them a whole variety of ways that they can meet their need or fulfill their want. Now, is an example of that some sort of a free service or free offering for those people to kind of keep them engaged with your offers? It could be a free offer. It could be an embellished offer or an extended offer. Sometimes it could be a more premium, more comprehensive and more expensive version of the original offer. Sometimes people will say no to an offer because it doesn't include enough. It could be a stripped down white label version of it. Or maybe they like, maybe they're interested in what you offer, but they just don't like you. So bring a competitor's offer. I mean, I'm always telling people to don't think about your competitor as a competitor. You have no competitors. You are unique and you have nothing to fear from bringing in the offer of somebody else who also seeks to serve the same client because that can be a complimentary offer if you integrate it into your business in a complimentary way. So it, it depends on the situation and it depends on who that client is, but the major point of this particular business model example is this shift to thinking about how to build a relationship with that client over time rather than just that one initial transaction. And you know, this is a very simple shift in thinking, but this can many times, it can double or quadruple the profit of a business when a business owner embraces this mindset, how much impact that is. And it does contribute to exponential growth because this is another factor which can dramatically increase the actual value that's created out of your customer relationship. Now this makes me see in some ways just the power of the concept of the business model because what you're showing with this example too is that you have 
a particular stage of the process of delivering value. So if you have a certain amount of people, as you said, raising their hand, some are yeses, some are noes, then to turn as many of those noes into yeses as possible, you know exactly which part you have to work on, which is the offer. And there are many ways that it could be tweaked and tested and everything, but you're now not completely lost in the wilderness of just how do I get more people in in general, but you know where you are and how to turn that dial. That's exactly right. But you've got to have a way to measure what you're doing and measure the impact that you're getting, measure the effectiveness of the action that you take. So you've got to understand what you're doing. You've got to understand what are the major systems of the business and then just track the performance. That's the master key that lets you unlock any growth idea in the business, the ability to see what's going on and navigate. Great. So I see now in these two areas, in my mind's eye, I see them sort of coming to life, the marketing side, the business model side. And I see how they are made up of these different areas that themselves interact with each other and help exponential growth. Now, at the risk of maybe asking something with an obvious answer, can you just describe now how when marketing as a whole and business model as a whole come together, how do they contribute to this idea of exponential growth in the overall business? Well, let's go back to that original model that we talked about, where I explained that the growth of a business comes from three areas. It's the number of clients that come in, it's the average value of a transaction, and it's the frequency of purchase. So if you think about that model, then the question is, how does marketing contribute to each of those three areas? And how does the business model contribute to each of those three areas? So let's just go through it very quickly. So is marketing increasing the number of clients who comes in? Absolutely. That's the direct impact of most marketing. Is it also increasing the transaction value? Well, certainly it should be if it's deep marketing. And if you think about what I just said about the the business model, the particular shift that I talked about may not bring in more clients, but it certainly is all about increasing the value of each of those clients because that shift in the business model to the relationship focus makes the relationship long and it gives you multiple opportunities to serve that client and create value every step of the way. So you have marketing increasing your number of clients, you have marketing and business model both increasing the value of every client relationship, and you also have marketing and business model both driving an increase in the frequency of purchase. Because obviously, a business model that's focused on long-term relationship is going to do a much better job of stimulating frequent purchases. That's what relationship is about. And marketing also will have that impact. So you're affecting multiple areas from multiple areas. And it's kind of this network of synergistic effects where Every area that gets boosted is boosting the other areas, and, and this is why I call it exponential growth. Wow. Well, that's enormously clarifying, and I have to admit that early in the interview when you were talking about the mathematics of it, I started to get worried that it was going to get too complex for me, but that makes it so simple. It, it, it can be complex, but I just like to think of it as taking baby steps, and just remember that there are different dimensions to a business and you need to take baby steps in, in all the dimensions. The more areas that you exploit, the less that you limit yourself artificially, the less that you shut off certain areas of the business, the more that you activate every resource and tool at your disposal, the easier it is because that lets you take really tiny little baby steps. And through this web of synergistic effects that just ripples naturally through your business and through your client relationships, these tiny baby steps can have enormous impact. Well, that sure has changed my view of the way that I've approached my business, the way we've worked together, especially in terms of that feeling that we were describing before of being overwhelmed, of taking on some huge new project, it feels like, when you're thinking of how can I actually grow, transform my business. But this idea of just laying one stone at a time and the idea of seeing clearly, and I hope it's clear to, to all the listeners now, 
that that's actually what you're saying is the most effective way to do it. Absolutely. Those baby steps. Yeah, absolutely. Just like a person who's trying to move from a state of disease into a state of health. I mean, you don't radically change your diet, implement a super intense exercise program, start a meditation program and yoga, begin 500 different things at the same time. You pick one area and you make some small improvements and you see, does it make you feel better? Does it give you more energy? And then apply that to another area. I mean, I think anyone who's been through that process on a personal level understands it and it's exactly the same with the business. Beautiful. Well, I feel like that has given me a lot to think about, even though, as I said, I've worked through some of these ideas before. I've going to be thinking about this for a while now and how it continues to apply. I hope that everybody listening takes this idea very, very seriously because it makes this notion of exponential growth, which is best case scenario, exponential growth, very much within reach, very much within reach. So Robert, it's been a pleasure as always and very educational and in fact a great example of the educational outreach you were describing before that people can do. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, it is an example of the educational outreach we were talking about before. And along those lines, before we sign off, I just want to give a a homework assignment to anybody who's listening here. If you own a business, please give some thought to that. Think about what are the areas of the business that you haven't explored? What are the assumptions that you've never challenged before? What are the places you've never looked at? Because those are the areas where it's most likely that you have easy things to do that are going to be painless, but might unlock the greatest possibility for improvement out of everything. Awesome. And I think that's something that everyone can not only benefit from, but probably have some fun with as well. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you very much, Riley. I really enjoyed talking with you today. You too, Robert. If you're a wellness business owner or manager, a free 30-minute tune-up call with Robert could be a great experience for you. Your business can be more fun, more effective, and more profitable. Just go to wellnessbusinesstuneup.com to get started now. Or call us at 800-430-1567.